Excellent. So today I'm just going to really focus on his words of wisdom. I have a dream, especially in the beginning of the year, um, everyone thinking about their New Year's resolutions, looking for something inspiring to keep them motivated. There's nothing more inspiring than Martin Luther King's dream. And, you know, just to have that little memory with us to kind of inspire us throughout the year we're going to work on a design element where it includes a, a silhouette of his so if you're not a hundred percent sure on how to draw a silhouette or if you're not good at portraits that's totally fine I have a nice printed silhouette that I just got offline that's going to help me um, with our silhouette and then we also have some words we're going to focus on the words and a colorful watercolor background. And for that design on our watercolor paper, you're going to need two pencils. I have two mechanical pencils here. Um, I have a rubber band. A calligraphy pen can also work for this project. I have two sizes of brushes just to design our background. I also have a Sharpie nearby, some watercolors, a paper towel, and a cup of water. So with all of these things, we're going to create a nice little uh, watercolor picture that has these inspirational words from Martin Luther King. And we're going to start off with the sketch of the silhouette here. So with our picture, you kind of want to see when you're, when you're hanging something up and you want to have your eye kind of drawn toward it or have it attracted to it, you want to see the placement of you know, your design elements. So with the words, the words are going to fairly take up some space. So I want to just kind of catty corner his silhouette off to the side and then just kind of have it so that this, this quote of his is kind of coming out from his mind. So the words are going to kind of be pouring out to the right side. Um, and the way to kind of do the silhouette is one of two ways. So you can print something like this and then easily just just taking some scrap paper you can just take your pencil and shade over you can kind of see through to the other side shade over the area where you need to draw a line so kind of cheating reduce reuse recycle so i'm just using this scrap paper i have the printed silhouette on the other side and I'm just working, just kind of going over the line that's drawn. And I'm just gonna use this curved in the front. So I have all of this kind of shaded in, and then I'm gonna see where I want the placement of my picture. So I'm gonna put it kind of off to the side here. And then I'm just gonna take my pencil and kind of trace over that shaded area where we just filled out towards the back. And don't worry if it's not perfect. And there we have a lighter line that kind of pops up. So as you can see, it allowed us to kind of transfer. And if you have transfer paper, this is also a little bit easier. You kind of can see it's a very, very light, but you can still see the lines where now you can go ahead and kind of sketch over those little bit of lines that were created for the silhouette. And there you have a silhouette of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And now we can focus on his very important words. So I have a dream. This is just um, an, a sample of the lettering that you can look up online. You can also um, decide on uh, different fonts. You can have it more printed if you like it more legible. You can get really creative with the things that are available. But the same thing would, would be true. You could shade the background on the edges 
where you know that you have the lines that you need to draw. And then again, do a transfer paper and just trace over the words that you find. Or another technique that I really find fun, if you're practicing calligraphy, is you take two pencils and a nice little rubber band here, and we're gonna make ourselves uh, a makeshift kind of calligraphy pen just to get ourselves a bit of a fancier kind of lettering for our words. Okay, so you have the two pencils. I'm gonna make sure that both have lead, ready to go. And we're gonna just carefully write the words, I have a dream. So it's really based on how um, your handwriting is. If you feel like your print is a lot better, then you can definitely print. If you feel like your handwriting is better in calligraphy or script style, you can do it that way. I'm gonna show you a version that's very similar to the one that we have here. So I'm going to put these two pencils together and kind of bring up a curve and down. And you see when you're writing, it kind of forms a double line. So you see here with my letter I, I did the writing, I pressed down and it formed a letter I with a little kind of lip here. And I'm just gonna continue. I'm holding my pencil at a 45 degree angle. So if 90 degrees is standing it kind of tippy toe, I'm kind of doing that halfway. And I'm holding my two pencils together, making sure both kind of touch the paper. And I'm going to have both pencils now. I'm going to write the word have. And you just make sure that you just go straight down and come back. Then I'm just gonna focus on looking at one letter. When I'm writing, the next would be V. The next would be E. And then we'll just move our lettering so here. And that next letter was an A. And lastly, come down. And for the D, R, E, A, M. And you can draw three dots for the ellipsis. So you kind of have this double letter thing going on. It gives you like the effect that it's kind of popping off the page. And we're going to now take our makeshift calligraphy pencil set and kind of separate it to now work with one pencil and kind of clean up the, the lettering so that we can start with our background with the paint and have a more defined line that we'll be painting around. So for this first letter, I'm going to connect this bold line here. So I have that first line connected and then moving on to the H similar
So now we're just kind of connecting these lines and cre creating ourselves A fancy writing. So I've connected these lines. And now once these are connected, I'm going to go to this one here. And then I'm going to draw two straight lines there. And then do a little editing. So I just e elongated these two lines and kind of connected it left this as the center and then added a line down here for the E. And now the same with the A. I'm going to connect these double lines. And now same thing with the D. Just going to connect these lines and then kind of finish off that curve here and move on to the R where I have this R connected and this R connected and now I'm going to go straight from the top to the top for the E connect that line also smooth out this little kind of twist here. So we have our E. And so I continued the A there. And then connected the line on the M, made these a little bolder and finished off this M. So the letters are done. Again, you can easily find some lettering that you like, or you can do it in this kind of double style of I have a dream. Um, and then we're going to get started painting our background with some watercolors to elevate and just create some dimension using color. So definitely use your happiest, brightest, favorite colors. You want to keep this inspiring for you. So you definitely want that dopamine flowing when you select your color choices. But the ones that I'm gonna use are going to be um, starting off with yellow. And I'm just going to wet my brush, take any kind of um, brush. It could be a quarter inch flat brush, any kind of flat brush, any brush really works because we're working on just kind of applying color and texture. I've wet my brush and I'm just now just putting a little color on. I'm gonna dip my brush in a little water and now just using a wet brush, pull that color around this lettering. And I'm gonna work in a, a circular motion. I want this to be a little cloud-like when it comes to texture. So definitely soft circles. You don't need much paint to get this accomplished. And I'm just gonna work around the lettering as best I can in soft circles. 
and just pulling the, the initial color. I'm not even going back to refill. I'm just using the color that's on there and just allowing the water to soften and kind of pillow these shades. And again, just going back for a little more color. And then with a circle, circular motion, we're just filling in the background. You wanna get in between the lettering and just wet your brush and pull through like so. What's fun about inspirational quotes or, or words, you can post them anywhere. Anywhere that you kind of frequent so that you get that, that little message that you sometimes need to keep it going. Okay. So very similar to a sunset. I'm just gonna mix a little red in here. And a little orange. And you don't need much pigment. You just need a little touch. And then again, with a circular motion, you can start blending toward the yellow. Just like so. And just pulling from the pigment that's already there. We're just working in a nice billowy circular motion. And then we'll work that a little further down. So we need a little touch more orange. And wet the brush and just a touch more. And literally it's just a touch. You're just swiping once across your watercolors. And then coming in with a little more whiteness and pulling those shades down. And we'll just keep working into the next shade, which would be this kind of bluish color. And I'm just circling with some pigment. Again, a wet brush and I'm going in between the lettering And then just, again, working in circular motions. I'm gonna grab a little wet swab of some purple in here. And just move that pigment around circular motion. 
kind of working to blend, create just like a little magical, almost dream state with this waterness, just watering it down. If you put too much pigment or if you feel like you ever make a mistake, you can always just press down on your paper and it removes. And then you can just kind of continue just move maneuvering around the lettering. And then just finishing off in this darker shade of blue. Again, just using a wet brush, swiping across several times, and then putting some pigment down. And again, continuing in a circular motion really gets the job done. And then once you kind of have this base color down, we're just gonna go into the background and kind of add literal clouds. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to kind of layer the colors that we used in a darker pigment. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So once we have this kind of billowy look, we're going to use these kind of round motions and kind of highlight what's already kind of forming here into some clouds. So we have this background. We have in between the lettering taken care of. And then now we're going to come in and kind of define the areas a little bit more with another layer of pigment. And we're gonna just create some clouds. So creating clouds is not as hard as you think. If you were good with the circular motion, we're going to do it in like a C kind of shape. So if you just kind of do a backwards C and then follow with a regular C. You curve one way and then curve the opposite way. And you can really freehand what I have here is just creating a C and then moving the opposite way, creating a C and then moving the opposite way. And just something that looks a little natural. And the way that you get uh, the pigment to be brighter is just a little bit less water and a little bit more swipes across your, your coloring. So I'm going to pay you back a little bit on here and create that initial kind of curve for another and just C and a C. Just alternating left to right, creating a, a C motion. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, creating a C and then going the opposite way. And 
usually a cloud will have a a little bit of a triangle shape to it. So when you're thinking of just doing a little cloud, creating that rounded C in the shape of a triangle definitely helps. And just curve to the left and to the right. So now that I've filled my yellow area with some clouds, I'm going to move on to this area with more orange. So I'm going to dip my brush into some water. I'm not really cleaning it. I'm just dipping it in the water and then doing a couple swipes of this orange here. And then same technique, I'm going to start off with a C, go the opposite way, and then just kind of fill in where you think a cloud would fit. And C. Continuing, going C one way, C opposite way. And kind of keeping the general shape like that of a triangle and just having longer edges than the top. So really just taking a, a trip to freehanding these little clouds. Maybe another little one lives right here. And I'm just gonna curve it to the C. And C. And I have a little cloud here. Then next I'm gonna come into this reddish color that I used earlier. So I'll wet my brush with a couple of swipes. And again, just making that C motion back and forth. And just continuing, just freehanding some little clouds. C forward and C behind. And I'm going to keep the colors generally in the area where I put the majority of the sky color. And again, just swiping C forward and backward. And just kind of forming a little almost triangle shape as I move along. There's a little baby one that's right here. Why not? And moving into some purple. Again, the C forward and backward. Now building it up to make it a triangular type shape. We have ourselves a little cloud there. And then coming into some light blue, we're going to bring our clouds down a ways here. Again, doing the C forward and backward, building it to kind of show a little bit of a triangular shape. In that way. And then I'm going to use a little gray at the bottom. Again, 
drawing a little C, forward and backward, and just freehanding these little clouds. Perfect. Now for our silhouette, I'm going to also take a little of this gray and just start filling in for our silhouette here. And I'm just wetting my brush and just trying to get an even kind of coat. And you just want this to be very pigmented and just kind of this soft gray. And then just keep swiping, trying not to overlap too much. It just gets a little darker when you overlap too much. So I'm just going to try to make this as much of an even tone as possible. So just try to do that by not layering, just kind of connecting the color. Just like so. And then once you have that bit of gray, you're going to definitely let it dry. So we're definitely going to put um, a couple of little clouds just to kind of speak to this idea of a dream in his mind. So I'm just going to mix a little of this dark gray that I have here with a touch of black. And I'm just gonna continue in this silhouette to take his gray skies or his cloudy gray and make it colorful. So I have a little gray cloud there, a little gray cloud here, and then it dissipates into a little color. So I'm going to take a little of that gray and make a cloud that's gray on one side, but colorful on the other. just to have that little bit of connection. Kind of showing that what he was seeing was troubling him, but what he was dreaming was infinitely better. And then I'll just do one more cloud up top. It kind of billows into the yellow. We have some seeds of this gray. And then we'll move it into some yellow. Okay, and then just gonna come 
and almost just round out some of the curved edges that have already dried. So I'm just standing the brush kind of tall and just curving it around so that you can see a little more dimension in the cloud. So we're just kind of lining and putting a little bit of a shadow to it. So that's just with yellow and a very little bit of water. We want pretty much a little bit of a darker shade that's just kind of finishing up these clouds. and outlining these clouds a little better. Now moving on to some orange. Less water means less pigmented and more pigmented rather. So I'm just gonna curve anywhere here and just kind of smooth out curving here. Just kind of curving there. I'm just defining these edges of the clouds a little more. I'm moving into some red now. I'm just kind of finishing up the edges a little. Now next with the purple, just kind of cleaning up and rounding off these edges a bit. And like I said, if you feel like you put too much, you can always just lift it off with a little paper towel. It's gonna curve and kind of line already there. Then lastly, in some of that blue. curving off the top. Just a little bit of gray that we have going on down here. Curving off some gray. And so the background is mostly done. Then we'll take some of this black. I'm going to just shade into the silhouette a little bit. So I'm standing my brush perpendicular and just pulling the black into the silhouette. Just like so, just pulling that kind of, standing it on the edge and pulling the black in. I'm curving around the edge.
me, I'm just pulling that color from the edge. And then it gradually gets lighter as it gets up. So we darken the bottom more than the top. And start filling in. The water into the black and just continue. Leave it a kind of gradient gray. So the lightest parts towards the top. And as it gets closer going down, it's darker going down. And then just adds to the design look of it just to make it look a little more design oriented. And it just tells you that this so many shades of gray to humanity. So it just kind of represents that nothing is always black and white. It's always shades of gray. Okay. And it also kind of has a representation of um, the darkness coming to light and then just blooming into these kind of colorful thoughts and, you know, no limitations to what he was thinking. Okay, and then lastly, we're going to take this, I have, like I said, a quarter inch flat brush, but you can fill in the lettering with a Sharpie. You can fill it in with paint. I'm going to start... Um, filling in with some black so the words really pop and I'm going to try to wait for the rest of this to dry but really I'm just going to use the lines that I drew kind of as a guideline and then if it's not perfect I'm just going to come in with a sharpie and kind of clean up a bit of edges so I'm just using the the lines that I drew to kind of Fill in the design of the lettering like so. And I'm using my pinky to kind of stabilize because writing letters is not always easy, but it helps that you have the quarter inch flat brush because it almost mimics having a calligraphy style. And, and I'm just using it as a guide. And just using the brush to kind of fill in what I've already mapped out for the words. So I'm just kind of keeping it in between the line as best I can. And I'm going to come up and then circle around. And just filling in that, that little technique that we did earlier with the double pencils. Just trying to stay in between the lines as best I can. And again, when you're finished with the lettering, you can always come back and fine tune the edges to your liking. Just to give it a cleaner look, you can use a ballpoint pen, you can use a Sharpie.
and just doing my best to stay in the line that was created now. Going into the letter D. And then the R. And then I'm going to do this E here and then come down to the bottom. So just a little bit of a close up of, of what we've got so far. And then we have the A. And notice when I do the A, I kind of start off to the right and then go left and go to the right. It's just easier that way for the brushes to kind of maneuver in that direction. And the M and the three dots for the ellipses. One, two, three. And then now we're going to take our Sharpie and kind of highlight a little bit of the clouds and also define them a little further and then finish off the silhouette and then we're almost done. So I'm just going to give it a second to kind of have the lettering dry. So my best strategy would be to take your Sharpie. You can also use um, a thin liner brush too, but I'm just gonna kind of come in with some curvy little lines to just kind of add to this little cloud. Short broken lines work best. Just kind of going over what's already there. Any little line that's kind of standing out to you. Something a little sloppy that needs a little Defining, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to give it a little cleanup. I'll just continue down here. A bigger section, you can definitely put a bigger line. Just give it a little continuation and sort of definition, like so. Especially these little ones that kind of continue the dream from gray to color. And this can be done with a crayon, a colored pencil. It doesn't have to be a Sharpie marker. Some people don't always have access to Sharpie markers. It could be Crayola. It could be any kind of brand that works for you. Like I said, even use a ballpoint pen to kind of create this kind of look and design. And I'm just being sporadic, you know, kind of going over as much or as little as my heart wants. Now I'm just gonna turn it back around. And just be careful of the lettering if anything is still 
kind of wet and just finalizing some lab work down here. And coming around. Even do some accents inside. Perfect. And then I'm going to let the letters dry a little bit further. I'm just going to get into the actual silhouette part and just kind of clean up this edge starting from the bottom. And then last but not least, just doing that once over on the letters to just really define them and clean the lines up. So I'm gonna continue upside down. I do have some letters down here that are still a little bit wet, but I definitely wanna just sharpen the edges of my writing. I'm just kind of outlining the lines that were drawn. I'm kind of squaring off. like so. And then the letter D down here gets a little clean up. And again, when creating these different works, don't feel like you can't get a little help. So as you can see from the type of lettering that you can choose from, the type of silhouettes that you can pull up, you can just utilize them as stencils to still create something. You don't have to feel like when you are painting that you have to learn how to draw right away. It's a practiced kind of skill. So the more that you trace, the more that you find designs, um, and trace over them, the easier that freehanding becomes. And, you know, when you have a finished work that looks great, it encourages you to, to move on to the next one and keep going. So I definitely want to encourage you today to keep going. And, you know, if you're familiar with Martin Luther King's famous speech, I hope that like him, your dreams come true, especially in this new year. So this is what we have for our design, an inspirational quote that you can hang anywhere. And once you're finished, of course, it's not complete without your signature at the bottom right. And I hope you enjoy. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I love you.